Welcome to our committee, Representative Dreskowski. Uh, Representative Barr moves House File 1421 uh, to be re-referred to, uh, no, I guess to be laid over for possible inclusion in uh, a possible omnibus bill, Representative Dreskowski. Thank you know how you. that works. Thank you. Welcome Anna. to our committee. Please say your name for the record and begin. And members, there's going to be a video here. The volume may get a little bit uh, loud at times, so be aware. Please say your name for the record and welcome again. Thank you, Representative Steve Dreskowski. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, members. Um, <clears throat> I think this is my first time, Madam Chair, before the Education Policy Committee. Um, so I'm, I hope uh, well, special I, welcome. I hope I have the the terms correct here, Madam Chair. Um, so the uh, bill uh, provides that um, um, schools may hold um, uh, uh, learning days, e-learning days, on days when there's inclement weather in Minnesota. And uh, with us today, uh, we have um, two individuals. We have uh, Mr. Dave Anderson, who is a principal at Zimbroda Mazeppa School, and Angela Heitman, who is a teacher and a parent there actively involved in this curriculum that they do. Um, and if you read the bill, members, it's, it's a pretty simple bill in terms of how it's laid out, but it essentially gives uh, authority to districts uh, to not only do the these days and to um, uh, provide a structure for how that agreement happens within the school, uh, but also provides that those days are counted in student contact uh, hours or part of the ADM, as you see on the final section of the bill. So that's my introduction of the bill, Madam Chair, and uh, maybe we want to go directly to our testimony. And Representative Draskowski, you are competing with me on this proposal. Mine was much thinner. Uh, Fewer words, but uh, I wanted to hear yours, not mine. So thank you very much for bringing forth the same concept uh, with a little more detail. Welcome to our committee, Principal Anderson. Uh, do you want to lead off? Yep, thank you, Madam. Please say your name for the record and begin. Uh, my name is Dave Anderson. I am the principal at Zaborda Mazeppa Middle School and High School. And would you like to proceed to uh, provide testimony to why this is uh, such a great Proposal. Yes, Madam Chairwoman. This this concept started in our district in uh, the fall of 2015. Uh, we had a new superintendent in our district who met with our teachers union and um, came up with the idea that you know if we have a snow day that we still should be able to provide an education to our students. And uh, he met with the teachers union administration, teachers union, and uh, came forth with a plan that we would provide some sort of education to our students in the event of inclement weather, which. This year, Southern Minnesota has been socked with a few instances of that. So um, the teachers union was definitely on board with the idea that the, the snow day, the concept of a snow day being a quote free day and nothing goes on anymore. Um, the, the ability for kids to continue to do coursework uh, provided by their teachers was, was very well received, not only by our teachers, but by our parents as well. So it, it, at Zaborda Mazeppa, our policy is pretty simple. The first snow day we have is not a, is not a wild day, and wild stands for weather-induced learning day. So our wild days simply mean that we provide education to our kids in the event of a snow day. Uh, we just had one last week, in fact, where um, we knew going from Thursday night and Friday the potential for anywhere between 2 and 14 inches of snow was going to arrive. So uh, the superintendent, Mr. Anger, enacted the plan saying in the event of a wild day, our snow day, we were going to go to wild day policy, which is kids knew full well, take their Chromebooks home. We're a one-to-one -one district in Zimbroda Mazeppa, so our students are, have access to Chromebooks. Our all grades 5 through 12 also has access to Schoology, which is an online platform, so they have all their curriculum loaded there as well. So um, it's been very positive from an administrative standpoint. It's been very positive, the feedback from our our uh, parents, and I will turn it over to one of our teachers to talk about her experience with it. Welcome, uh, Ms. Heitman. Please say your name for the record and begin. Okay, um, my name is Angela Heitman. I teach at some Burma's upper schools and I have children in the district as well. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, I was also a part of that committee that met and we met several times to discuss the pros and cons of it as well just because of the different issues that can come up with that. Um, but we do get hit with some weather obviously and one of the components we talked about was that in, in the event of that loss we would either take away certain days that were a part of the schedule or add on at the end of June which then that there's a break in that learning and so that was the biggest thing as a teacher I can they can continue 
what we're on, like the, the subject that we're on. So I teach biology and we can't do the labs like in school, but there's something out there that is supplemental. And usually it's something that I could take um, that I wouldn't have necessarily had time for in the classroom, but uh, then they can do something different that um, is supplemental to our particular curriculum at that time. Um, as a parent, I have a fifth grader and a junior, and they're different. The junior is doing subject level work, and so his is the same thing. Whatever that subject is, they have something different. And it could be 10 minutes, it could be 45 minutes of what he's working on. And then the fifth grader, um, did they get the, okay. The, my fifth grader has a bingo sheet, the subjects, and he just picks one from each column. And had he, if we didn't have this, then he might have been a little more um, stationary at home. <laughs> like he might have still played outside, but this gives him some more things to do, which I'm not opposed to at all. Um, I'll give you an example. In class, we just, if you want an example, in class, we, in biology, we just, we bred fruit flies. And so that's something that's hands on. I can't send them home with that, so obviously I cannot do that. But I found a, a virtual lab of that, and then they got several components of development of that and the genetics piece of it. So to me, it can, it's only helpful because I wouldn't have time for that in the classroom, 44 minutes. Thank you, Ms. Heisman. Thank you. That, you're proving the, in, the uh, ingeniousness of, of teachers when, uh, you know, when they need to, to have a fallback. There's always a creative idea someplace to cover for the content that uh, is needed for our children to continue to learn. Uh, are there questions from members? Uh, yes, Representative Kudish Padi. I really like this idea. I'm a teacher, I'm a library media specialist. My district um, uh, has the one-to-one -one program as well. Um, so I'm in charge of getting 1,400 Chromebooks out to middle school students and uh, keeping up with the Schoology as well. So this is a great program and I um, can only see how much of an opportunity this is. My one question is, I know that your area is very rural. So how does, um, what do you do if a family doesn't have access to the internet or, or something like that? that? That's a great Mr. question. Mr. Anderson. That's a great question and I'm glad you brought that up. Um, we do, being a rural district, as you pointed out, not all of our kids have access to Wi-Fi or have access to internet at home. So our teachers have been more than accommodating to our students that, look, if you can't do it online in, in, in a Schoology platform or, or a Google Docs platform, that paper is certainly acceptable, that, that these kids are certainly given the opportunity to complete that work outside of an electronics. And I also want to point out that our teachers at our district are tremendously flexible. So if, if we have a, a snow day on a Friday, um, they are very gracious about making sure the kids have ample time to get that item in. It isn't just that the school day ends at 310 on a Friday and it happens to be a, a, an inclement weather day. That work isn't necessarily has to, has to be done at that 310. They have all weekend to work and I know that some of our teachers from last Friday's snowstorm are still, you know, getting some work turned in as of yesterday and the day, you know, even today online. So we definitely make concessions for our kids who don't have technology access. Representative. Do, um, does your district provide hotspots for students? Is that an, an oppor uh, at opportunity? This, at Principal all? Anderson. At this point, no, we don't necessarily provide hotspots. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Uh, Representative Jaskowski, you probably didn't know that you were supposed to bring treats if you've never been in this committee before. It's not my rule, it happens to be staff rule, so uh, I forgive you and you don't need to bring them, but what you saw being passed out is coming from uh, our next uh, author, uh, Representative Anselmo. <laughs> so I well, hope you didn't think the cupcakes were just a traditional we have. Well, well Madam yeah, Chair, I could have fibbed and said that there was coordination between me and Representative. Well, you could, <laughs> yes. And, and he probably would agree that that would be okay. Uh, closing comments, Representative Driskowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. We also have a video, um, Madam Chair, if we could take a look. It's, it's very, uh, very be, good. Thank you. And before you do that, Representative Lee, you had a question. I'm sorry, I missed you. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I was just curious, do you track attendance too if, if you do have the um, school day? Uh, that's Represent, a, uh, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> thank you. That's a great question. We do track attendance um, and we count every kid as present. 
to start the day, and then we work on the fact that you know they, their, their presence is that they're doing something, that they're actually completing the work that they are asked to complete. So now we have the production. <laughs> yes, Principal Anderson. Before, we, before I show this, I just want to preempt to say this is a, a video example of our seventh grade team. It's a cross-curricular assignment, so all four of our uh, seventh grade teachers got together to make this video for all of our seventh graders for their wild day assignment. Hey, seventh graders, uh, for your wild day assignment today, we're going to be focusing on maple syruping, and we're using the book Little House in the Big Woods by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Hey, Mrs. Bradley, who's Laura Ingalls Wilder? As you know, we recently finished our nonfiction unit. So, for your Wild Day assignment, I want you to go on to Schoology and read the article on Laura Ingalls Wilder. Then, I want you to choose five interesting facts about her and write a two paragraph summary on her life. Now, I will be grading you on three things. First of all, your ability to distinguish fact from opinion. Next, your ability to write a cohesive summary. And last, that you can put these items in chronological order. When you're done, please upload your assignment onto Schoology. Have fun! So we're here with a maple tree, and the sap from the maple tree is kind of like the maple tree's blood, if you will. It comes from the ground up all the way to the branches, to the very tips of the branches, as described in, in the little house in the big woods, and it is what allows the tree to make leaves. So as the tree prepares to make the leaves early in the spring, like we are now, we can tap the tree and harvest just a little bit of the sap that's moving up and down the tree. So if you look here, we're using three taps in this tree. The taps are small plastic taps. This end goes into the hole that's drilled in the tree, and this end gets hooked to the tubing for the sap to drain out. We hook the tubing together with these three piece or three part hookups, these uh, T junctions that hooks the different tubings together as it heads down into the bucket. Use your document on your history page in Schoology to compare and contrast how we collect maple syrup today with how Laura Ingalls Wilder did it in her book. We collect the sap in the buckets. <laughs> hey, Mr. Johnson, why is the sap sweet? Great question, Mr. Morris. It's photosynthesis, of course. Now we're going to do a little review on photosynthesis. You're going to play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? All you need to do is go to my Schoology page. It'll be in your wild assignment, just like normal. And remember, for your math assignment, tree plus tree equals sticks. <laughs> now that we have the sap, we'll head over to the evaporator. Sap is 97% water, so we're going to have to boil off a lot of it to get down to syrup. Hey, Mr. Moe, how much sap are we going to need? <laughs> Mr. Boris has told you that sap is 97% water. That means it's going to take about 40 parts sap to make one part syrup. With the information that we gathered with our volume of the bucket and the pan, there's questions on school view that need to be answered using those measurements and using the ratio of 40 to 1. Thanks. Thank you very much. That was really, really fun to watch. And Great for the students, you know, because you just didn't make it complicated. They can understand it and follow your directions. Very good. Uh, Representative Kunish Padin, yes, follow up. Uh, one more question. On those, uh, those wild days, are teachers expected to be at school? Or are they able to stay home and, and work with this on, um, at, at home? Ms. Heitman. Okay, thank you. Um, I stay at home, and then I check it 
routinely throughout the day and then as they as it makes it easier for me I'm not sitting at my computer but as I check it and I read there or whatever their submissions are then I mark their attendance and so it's you know I if they have a question I'm it's right there up for me but I don't have to be at school mm -hmm. representative uh, follow-up no I'm good thank you. representative Bennett last question Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll try to make this quick, but you've got my curiosity up as a former teacher. What's the, what are the logistics of trying to put this together? Obviously, the teachers don't do it on the snow day. <laughs> so do they prepare, you know, a number of lessons ahead of time for those potential snow days? Or how do, how do they coordinate all that? Ms. Heitman. Okay. Um, and I kind of wrote that down earlier, and I forgot to tell you. Each subject or grade level is going to be a little bit different. Um, like the bingo card, they changed they once they have one for the fifth grade then then they change it for the next one so they're varying up the activities I wait until I see right where we're at with our with the lessons that I'm at and what we've accomplished and what unit we're on and so it, it depends grade level and subject level Representative Pennant, follow up thank you uh, Representative Dreskowski, closing comments. Thank you Madam Chair thank you for your indulgence in in this bill and uh, I hope you can uh, uh, we can gain your support for it. Uh, it's a bill that uh, encourages innovation and it, uh, it it keeps teachers teaching, keeps students learning, and uh, uh, may even be good on the taxpayers back chair. Thank you very much. And when it was heard in the Senate, were you the two who testified as well? Do you know Representative Driskowski? Uh, Madam Chair, I believe that was a different bill or a different effort. Oh, okay. Thank you. With that, uh, members, uh, Representative Barr renews his motion that House File 1421 uh, be laid over for possible inclusion in an omnibus bill. Thank you. Uh, members, all in favor say aye. aye. And I guess that we don't have to vote on it, but uh, those, and the motion prails to make sure that it uh, is laid over. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much Thank for you taking very much. time from your school to come to us today. Thank you.